If your life is affected by multiple sclerosis or any other neurological condition, then this channel is for you. So please consider subscribing to be kept up to date with future videos. My name's Liam and in 2018, I was diagnosed with relapsing remittent MS. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Epstein-Barr virus. You may have heard a bit about Epstein-Barr um, over the last week or so. Um, there's been some developments and potential um, links to MS. So I wanna just talk about what Epstein-Barr is and how it affects MS or how it can potentially be the cause of MS. So I'll link a video up here or somewhere um, from a YouTube video that I watched recently from two doctors. Um, they talk about lots of different medical things, I think. Um, but in this particular video, they were talking about the links between MS and Epstein-Barr virus. Chances are being that they are in the medical profession and have a doctorate. Um, they know a lot more than I do and perhaps can articulate that in a much better way than I can. Um, so yeah, I will link that video, do check it out. So what is Epstein-Barr virus? Epstein-Barr is really really common. Um, something like 95% of people have had it or have it. So it's really common. It, it's typically the cause of things like glandular fever and is most common in teenagers and young adults. There may be some synergy between you know, the most common age uh, for which you are likely to get an MS diagnosis. There might be some some links there. You may have heard of it being referred to as the kissing disease um, as it's typically passed through saliva and bodily fluids. You may also have heard Epstein-Barr virus referred to as uh, herpes virus 4. Now, we do hear you know, slang or, or Mickey taking when it comes to things like herpes. It's, you know, he's got herpes, um, but it's all part of like a family of viruses. Um, as I said, 95% of, of people have been exposed to it, but unless you went on to develop glandular fever, you probably wouldn't have noticed. So does Epstein-Barr cause MS? Well. No, they're not saying that if you if you have Epstein-Barr, you are going to develop multiple sclerosis. But what they have found in a recent study is that all the people they tested, everyone that had MS had been exposed to Epstein-Barr. So there's no data to suggest that it's di directly causing it, but there is a correlation there that I suppose can't be ignored. And that is that everyone who, who goes on to get MS or develop MS has been exposed to Epstein-Barr at some point in their lives. That's the theory. So the study that they've done, um, it's really quite clever actually. Um, I believe they've used um, blood samples from the American military. I believe if you are in the military, you are required to have a blood test at least once a year. So they've actually got lots of data of people's blood tests um, as a, over a progression of a long period of time, which means they can see exactly when um, they, uh, the sample then indicates Epstein-Barr, and then they can see whether or not um, it goes on to, uh, to develop into, into multiple sclerosis. I think they, they, yeah, they tested a load of soldiers and um, a percentage of those went on to develop MS. All of those, except one, had been exposed to Epstein-Barr, I believe. Um, so they're not quite sure whether there was an anomaly with that sample or there was another, another thing, but basically it's saying that if, if you have had Epstein-Barr, you're a much higher chance of going on to develop MS than you would had you not been exposed to the virus. So how does it affect MS? Well, the Epstein-Barr virus itself um, sort of attacks or affects the central nervous system um, and can be present in the brain uh, and other areas of the, of the central nervous system, which, uh, you know, those of us that have MS will know, you know, that is a big sort of correlation there because that's what MS is, isn't it? It's, it's the central nervous system being attacked and therefore having issues. So you can see why, if there is a virus that attacks the central nervous system, why the body, the human, you know, your body might then say, well, that shouldn't be there, I'm going to attack it. But then there's an anomaly that makes it continue to attack itself and take that myelin off your off your nerves because that's what MS is, isn't it? It's the it's the um, it's the attack on the central nervous system that strips the myelin demyelination of the central nervous system. So it's basically like exposing a wire. So why could two different people have Epstein Barr, but one go on to develop multiple sclerosis and the other doesn't? Well, this is probably where your genetics come in because we do also um, know of theories that present that there is like a genetic link to MS. So there may be a history of it in your family. Um, you know, there's, there's perhaps almost a pre predisposition, is that the right word? Uh, you know, to, or, you know, you're, you're more likely uh, because of your genetics to go on to develop MS. So it's like almost the Epstein-Barr is facilitating something that's already sort of inside you. Um, and this is due to something called the HLA system or the HLA markers, I think. Yeah, it's the HLA system. And that is basically markers in your cells that let the body know not to attack it, basically. Yeah, so this, so this HLA system basically protects your own cells from your own immune system. But actually, it may well be that some people's markers or some people's cells in their body 
allow the Epstein-Barr virus to spread in, you know, in, in a greater numbers of those infectious cells, um, which are then, I guess, may pave the way for for NS to to come in and, and, and be an issue. So everyone's markers of these types, you know, the HLA markers are unique. You know, we're, we're not all the same. Um, and these particular group, your group of HLA markers are referred to as your HLA haplotypes. So again, if your body is allowing the the, uh, the Epstein-Barr to, to spread um, more quickly, quicker then you know there's perhaps going to be a, a, a greater chance of you um, going on to develop ms and one thing they have found is that those people that were tested if they tested positive for multiple sclerosis they were displaying a higher level of antibodies against um epstein bar which means there's more of it your body's trying to do more to, to fight against it and um, which kind of leaves like a history of that which then repeat yeah so the people with ms will have a greater number of antibodies and they've been perhaps fighting it in a bigger way or, or for longer um so there's sort of indications there as well now i've got some more information here and i'm gonna i'm gonna read it verbatim because um it's yeah You'll see why, uh, and I want to get it right. So it also says, a further possibility is that EBV can interact with our own DNA in regions where it is similar to the DNA of the Epstein-Barr virus itself. Our own genomes contain sections of DNA called HERVs, or human endogenous, endogenous, yep, human endogenous retroviruses, that sounds fancy, uh, which seem to, to be viral DNA that has been incorporated into our own DNA millions of years ago. Usually herbs are benign, but EBV infection may change the way herbs behave and influence the immune system in the process. One study showed that, an in that increased disease burden and speed of progression of MS was associated with increased activity of herb regions of the genome. You can see why I've read it now. I, I kind of I get lots of that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're starting to step up now. Um, this association between EBV and the HERV regions of our DNA could suggest new directions for the future MS drug research, such as an, an, such as antiviral therapies that could be given after EBV infection to reduce the chances of later developing MS. Sounds promising. There's currently no vaccines available for um, for, for Epstein-Barr, um, but there are uh, some sort of clinical trials ongoing at the moment. Um, and if successful, um, it would mean that you know, hopefully you would see a massive reduction in cases of Epstein-Barr, which would therefore mean um, a reduction in new cases of MS, as well as things like cancers and glandular fever. So there we go. Um, yeah, so that's some sort of breakthrough moments, I guess, in the science medical world at the moment for, for us um, or those of us that have MS. It's not necessarily like, what does that mean for me? Well, at the moment, nothing, but it's, you know, progress is progress so hopefully some good will come of it um, hope you enjoyed the video uh, again there's some bits in there that even i don't quite understand but i'm going to do a bit more research on it as well um, and see uh, see what i find but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button i don't mind um, would love you as a subscriber as well so that um, you can join our gang i've had some lovely lovely comments and messages uh, and emails this week um, from people that have been watching the videos saying how much they enjoy them and you know how comforting it is comforting it is to know that there's other people with ms that are you know trying to figure it all out together Together. so please join our gang we're a friendly bunch we're here to support each other and help each other through those dark moments um so yeah we'd love to have you along with us as well and um, thanks for all your support so far um you know we've smashed past 250 subscribers quite quickly um and that to me is just wonderful so thank you so much for all your support i really appreciate it and uh, yeah look forward to uh, chatting with you in the comments and sharing some more videos with you soon